So today we're going to have a look at a uh, class of circuits that are called multivibrators. So a multivibrator is a circuit that has two states, on and off, and um, the three different classes operate in different ways. So the first one, we're going to call it monostable, and it is stable in only one state, which we'll say is off. So stable in one state. Off. Okay, so if we were to graph what the voltage over time might look like, it would be low and then we trigger it with something, it will disturb that stability, it will go high for a certain amount of time, then it will drop back low again and it will not change until we did trigger it again. Okay, so we need some triggering event at this, at each of these two times. Does it need to be triggered to be off, like when it goes down? Well, you can look at the complement of it, if you want. And so it's on, and then if you trigger it, it goes off for a little while, and then it goes back on again. Yeah. But that's just, it's the same thing, just in the complement of this. So we'll, we'll consider off being the stable state, and on being the temporary unstable state for the monostable. All right. Okay. By stable. is stable in two states, so both the on and off state, so on and off. Okay, so if I were to look at it, it would uh, be low to start with and I'd trigger it and it would change to high and it would stay there until I triggered it again. Okay, so think of it like a coin toss really, a coin, you flip it and it lands on the opposite side, we'll flip it over and it lands on the opposite side and it won't go back to uh, the other side again until you flip it again. Okay? That's a good analogy. Yeah. All right. So each time that we're changing state is when it triggers. Okay? Um, so the bistable is, is well, the, one of the types of circuits that is a flip-flop. Okay, so an example of a bistable is a flip-flop. And the third type of multivibrator is one where it is not stable in either state, and that is the A-stable. The A meaning not stable. Okay, so it's not stable in either state. So what it will do is that once it reaches a state, it will automatically, after a certain amount of time, flip to the opposite state. And then that will then flip back again. Okay? So no triggering these ones, and it would simply turn itself on, then back off again, and on, back off again. Okay. And there are many different ways that we can uh, create an S table. So one of the famous ones is the triple five timer circuit, integrated circuit. So it's a package which, uh, if you configure it a certain way, it can be a, either a monostable or an S table. And I think you can make a bistable with them. Uh, you can use hop amps. You can wire an op amp with it to be an S stable. Uh, so later on, when we look at the op amps in the uh, analog circuits, uh, we'll actually look at how to create this and the operation of one. Uh, a third type, you can use a, a Schmidt inverter. This is my favourite because uh, it's a very simple circuit. I'll draw it quickly because it's very easy. Pass it to ground, and you connect the output to the input with a resistor. So that produces the A stable? That'll produce an A stable. And yep. You can adjust the frequency, so how quickly it does it, by adjusting this resistor. So if you put a variable resistor there, you can control it. That looks like the simplest one out of the three. It is the most simple. Um, however, 
these come in packages with six of them in a package. So unless you need lots of Astables or lots of Schmidt inverters, uh, you can um, be fairly wasteful of space on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, there is another one which uses a uh, NAND gate. Oh, NAND gate. No, so NAND gate has table. And the diagram for this one. The output of that will operate. Uh, yeah, so, okay. So where's um, the input? Sorry? Where's the input? There is no input. Oh, no, okay. even input for our stable, so no triggering for any of these. So of course, because it bridges, just automatically reduces. Keep yep. doing it. Okay. So there are several different types, and there's, I'm sure that there are even more than what I've got here. Um, okay, so we're going to look at a little bit more detail at the flip flop, so the, the bi stable multi vibrators. Flip flops are the uh, bi-stable multi-vibrator, so that they're stable in either state. So, stable in either on or off, on or off states. And these are very useful because they're effectively a memory device. So it's a one-bit memory cell, if you like. Um, so if I uh, want to set the flip-flop, I can set it to be a 1 or a 0 or whatever I like and it will stay that way until I change it. Okay. Does that include it when it's off, like when the power's off? Oh no, when, it, when you power it off it's no. It's, it's like it's, RAM then? Yeah, it, yeah. That's, it is what RAM used to be. RAM used to be made of a whole bunch of flip-flops. <laughs> so, um, that was obviously a very expensive way of doing it and probably quite large for the size so they obviously invented better ways of yeah. storing memory now. But um, essentially, that's what they are. They're a, a one bit of memory is a flip flop. Um, so there are several types. We'll look at the unclocked, which is the asynchronous type first, and we'll then discuss what it means after we get to the synchronous, what the difference between asynchronous and synchronous is. So an unclocked flip flop. Example is an SR, and all flip flops have two outputs. They've all got a Q, which is the output, but they've also got the complementary of that, complementary output, which is known as Q bar, or not Q if you like. Okay, and the best way to actually show the operation of a flip flop is well, there are two ways you can do it, um, and depending on um, how much space you want, but uh, you can use truth tables or a uh, timing diagram. So truth table I find best for some of these, um, especially the asynchronous. Uh, timing diagram can show with uh, the difference between asynchronous and synchronous. So some flip flops actually have both of those types of inputs. So I'll start with a truth table. So we've got our two inputs, S and R, and I'm only going to bother with, actually I'll show Q and Q bar, for this first one, later on I won't bother. It's yeah, because they're just the opposite, just of, opposite each other. of each yeah. other. So it's kind of redundant. Both set and reset are zero, there is no change. So if Q is high, it will remain high. If Q is low, it will remain low. And Q bar will be the, the complement of that, the opposite of that. If I set the set pin to logic high and keep the reset pin logic low, then Q will, regardless of what it was before, be 1. Okay? And Q bar will be 0. That's the opposite. If I have set low and reset high, then Q will be set to 0. So I've reset my output. And Q bar will be set to And the final possible state that we could have on the input here is both set and reset. I mean, set and reset high. And in this case, what set is trying to do is set Q to high, 
And what Reset is trying to do is set root Q bar to high. But they both both can't be high, can they? Well, they're both trying to be high, and they both can't be high because they've got to be complementary. So this is an invalid input state. So if I have both set and reset high, this is going to be a problem um, because it's trying to set both the outputs high, but and clearly can't do that. So as we talked about before, what would actually happen if you did that? Because there's uh, nothing stopping you from setting it high well, and then reset it. Well, it'd probably be un unpredictable. So it might settle on one of them, and you don't know which one. Or it might set both of them high somehow. <laughs> or it might, might do damage something else. It might, uh, I don't think it'll damage it. Um, generally, they're protected for that. So um, the SR unclocked simply just looks at the two inputs S and R. And they are called asynchronous because if I were to draw a timing diagram of this, uh, asynchronous. And I'm only going to bother drawing Q with this one. So if set is low and reset is low, and let's say, say that Q starts as low as well. If I change set to high, keeping reset low, then Q at nearly the same well. time, I'm just going to draw them as at the same time, Q will change to high. It's important to note here that this isn't an instantaneous transition. We talked about that before. There is a finite yeah. speed that these things can change at, and so there will actually be a very small but real delay between set going high and would you say micro? Uh, it's probably in the order of nanos nanoseconds. It'd probably be dependent upon the, um, the chip. So that's 10 to the minus 6. Yeah, which is there might close. be a um, uh, 10 to the minus 9 is nanoseconds. So it's, it's a very, very short amount of time. But um, it's, yeah, it's there. But it's yep. there. It's yep. real. Um, and that actually does come into account later on. I'll discuss where it might be a problem. Um, Okay, so if set goes back to low again, we're back to here, low, low, so set and reset are both low, and remember set and reset both being low, we get no change, so the output doesn't change until, hmm. well it won't change until reset goes high. So if reset now goes high, and keeping set low, then yeah, cool, this right. is when it changes. Okay. So I could have had set going high and low well, as many times as I like <laughs> in this case and it wouldn't change the output. Because it's already high. Because it's already high yeah. and it doesn't, it doesn't want to change. It won't <laughs> change back to low again until we get our reset yep. um, signal. So the way I see it is when you set high, when you set high then Q is high, and then when you set reset high, then Q bar is high. Yep, yep. yep. So if I were to draw Q bar here, just be the opposite of that. Yeah. Okay. So that's the uh, SR asynchronous flip-flop.